Welcome to Wings of Arrow Advanced Education and Research Organization. To know more, visit our official web page www.wingsofarrow.in. Hi guys, today we are going to study about Tension Philippine. So in the year 1925 by the name of a scientist Dr. Herbert Wagner who worked on the analysis of the way in which a thin sheet of a material behaves when supported at the edges as it in an aircraft structures and he has evolved the theory of a diagonal tension field to explain it. This diagonal tension field explains about the ability of a thin sheet material to carry an increasing load after it began to buckle, which is in conventional structures was regarded as failure. The spars of an aircraft wings usually comprise of upper and a lower flanges connected by a thin stiffened webs. These webs are often of such thickness that they buckle under sheer stresses at a fraction of the ultimate load. So when the web of an beam buckles under the action of internal diagonal compressive stresses produced by shear leaving a wrinkled web capable of supporting diagonal tension only in the direction perpendicular to the buckle. This beam is said to be a complete tension field beam. The basic idea of this theory is the web after buckling cannot carry any shear in the beam by developing a shear stress but it can carry or it does carry the shear by developing tensile stress in the direction of the diagonal buckles or the folds. So finally we have come to a conclusion that uh, diagonal tension field beams are depends on relative magnitudes of shearing force and the depth of the beam. So we can see this theory represents that when a concentrated flanges areas having a depth d between the centroids and the vertical stiffness which are spaced uniformly along the length of the beam as shown in figure it is assumed that the flanges resist the internal bending moment at any section of the beam while the web of the thickness t raises the shear vertical force so we can see a animated videos where we can see when the load applied into the system how the diagonal tension takes place the effect of this assumption is to produce a uniform shear stress distribution through the depth of the web at any section so let's discuss a small derivation under this phenomena therefore at this section of the beam where the shear force is s and the shear stress is tau is given by tau equals to shear force by cross-sectional area which can be represented as tau equals to s by t by named as equation number one consider a small element a b c d of the web in a panel of a beam as shown in figure this element is subjected to tensile stress sigma t produced by the diagonal tension on the plane a b and c d and the angle of the diagonal tension is alpha as shown in figure on the vertical plane FD it has been drawn a imaginary line onto the element. The shear stress is acting onto the element plane FD and the direct stress is on called as sigma Z. Now considering the equilibrium of the element FCD as shown in figure B, 
resolve vertical forces we get that sigma t into sin alpha becomes a force into the area cd plane into the thickness will be equals to tau fd into t so from the triangle if cd we can come to an conclusion that cos alpha equals to cd by fd now substituting the value of cd by fd value in the previous equation we can find that sigma t equals to tau by sin alpha into cos alpha as per the trigonometric formula we know that we can rewrite the equation as sigma t equals to 2 tau by sin 2 alpha in this case we are assuming that shear forces will be shear forces will be equivalent to the weight at the sections of the beam now replacing that is with w so we can write as tau equals to w by td now substituting the equation 1 in the previous equation we get as sigma t equals to 2w by td into sine 2 alpha resolving the horizontal forces for the element fcd now with that what we can get sigma z fd into t equals to sigma t cos alpha cd into t because sigma t is an inclined one so considering the element fcd again so we can write cos alpha equals to cd by cf cd by fd and substituting the value in the previous equation we get as sigma z equals to sigma t into cos square alpha in the previous equation we have obtained the value of sigma t substituting the same value in this equation and we get that sigma z equals to w by t d into tan alpha named as equation number 3 the direct loads in the flanges are found by considering the length of the beam as z as shown in figure on the plane mm which are the direct and the shear stresses sigma z and tau acting on the web together with the direct loads ft and fb in the top and the bottom flanges respectively as shown in figure now resolving the forces horizontally we can get that fb minus ft since it is directing opposite to the fb plus sigma z into td because sigma z is a shear stress we need to convert in force so sigma z into td equal to zero taking the moments about the bottom flanges around the bottom flanges fb so we can write the first we have w and the perpendicular distance is z which is acting in a clockwise direction so we can name as we can write w into z then we have ft ft into d which is acting in an anti-clockwise direction so negative ft dot d plus we have sigma z sigma z is an shear stress we need to convert in the the force so sigma z into td becomes the force and it is acting on the center of the depth of a beam so sigma z td becomes the force into d by 2 is a perpendicular distance when we are taking the moment above the bottom flanges and equivalent to zero now by simplifying this equation we get this and substituting the value of sigma z from the previous equation after substituting and by simplification we are getting this then ft equals to wz by d plus w by 2 tan alpha now here we got this ft equals to wz by d plus w by 2 tan alpha this is the force in a top flanges and the same equation we are substituting in this previous equation the equation number 4 we get as 
equation number 6 the diagonal tension stress sigma t induce a direct stress sigma y on an horizontal plane at any point of the web on a horizontal plane hc in an element a b c d as shown in a figure a there is a direct stress sigma y and an complementary shear stress tau so from considering of a vertical equilibrium of an element h d c we have sigma y h c into t equivalent to the sigma t of sine alpha c d into t now again taking the element h d c where this angle c d is a 90 degree so we can get that sine alpha equals to c d by h c so substituting the value in the previous equation we get as sigma y equals to sigma t sine square alpha substituting the value of sigma t from the previous equation we get as sigma y equals to tau sine square alpha by sine alpha dot cos alpha now cancelling of the common terms we get as sigma y equals to tau tan alpha again recalling the equation one where we have considered w equals to s that is shear force tau equals to s by td now substituting this value in the previous equation we get as sigma y equals to w dot tan alpha by td this tensile stress sigma y on a horizontal plane of a web of a beam cause compression in the vertical stiffness so a stiffness may be assumed to be support half of each adjust panel in a beam so the compressive load p in a stiffener can be given as p equals to sigma y into tb that is the shear stress into the cross sectional area now again we know the value of sigma y substituting the value of sigma y then we can get that p equals to wb tan alpha by d so if the load is sufficiently high the stiffness will buckle so this states indicates that buckle of a column of an equivalent length by this form l equals to d by root over 4 minus 2b by b and l equals to d there are two conditions if b is less than 1.5 of d or b equals to greater than 1.5 of d there are two indicated tests in addition to causing compression in a stiffness the direct stress sigma y produces on the bending of a beam flanges between the stiffness as you can see here so each flanges act as a continuous beam carrying on an uniformly distributed load of intensity sigma y into t so as per the bending moment equation we know that w l square by 12 so we can substitute the value of that maximum bending moment of the stiffness occurring at the stiffness that is max m max equals to sigma yt b square by 12 now substituting the value of sigma y which i have already found in the before value we can get that m max w b square tan alpha by 12 d midway of the stiffness of the bending moment reduces to the half b square tan w b square tan alpha by 24 d now this professor wagner want to find what is the ang diagonal angle along this beam so by they have found adjusting itself such as by assuming by assuming the total strain energy condition if it is assumed that flanges and stiffeners are rigid then the strain energy compresses the strain the shear strain energy of the web is only and alpha equals to 45 degree but in other cases will ranges from 40 to 38 
So, for the beam all components made up of same material, the condition of the minimum strain energy leads to a various equivalent expression for alpha, which is one of is showing and displayed on your screen, tan square alpha equals to sigma t plus sigma f by sigma t by plus sigma s where sigma f and sigma s are the uniform direct compressor stress induced by the diagonal tension in the flanges and stiffeners respectively using as a criterion index value k also describe that root over of shear force by the depth of the web so using that we can find that most often aircraft structures the index value should be less than 7. The major summary of this the compressive load B equals to WB tan alpha by D and to find the diagonal angle of a diagonal tension field diagonal angle of the element is tan square alpha equals to sigma T plus sigma F by sigma t plus sigma s so where sigma t equals to 2w by td into sine 2 alpha thank you for watching this video if you have further inquiry or requested video drop down to our mail wings of arrow at the rate gmail.com don't forget to subscribe for more updates for the time being take care stay blessed inspired and fly high